Okay, hello everybody, welcome back to episode 60. Episode 60, C now. We're still telling the story of Yasuke. As per tradition, how are you doing, Heather, this week? I know we just had a chat before hitting record, but, you know, you gotta ask anyway. It's definitely spring here. It's so beautiful. We've got cherry blossoms, we've got nanohana, we've got pollen, we've got kafuncho, but we've also got longer days, warmer weather, and, oh, it's it's just, it uplifts the spirits. How about you? I'm in a good mood. Yeah, everything's going good. I'd start my new job next week. Well, it'll be training from home, but finally starting work again. So wow. excited for that. Yeah. It's already almost April. Yeah, let's that's, that's not think, let's not worry about that too much. <laughs> cool, going to go with you on that. Um, But jumping in then, so we left off. Last episode with Yasuke and everyone else entering into Kyoto for their fated meeting with Obu Nobunaga. But I failed to mention that as they grew ever closer to Kyoto, their small pr procession had been growing and growing. So that when they finally did enter into the city, their small group had almost blossomed into a cohort of like 700 people. So quite a lot by this point. But today as well, to add to the situation, today was not a normal day in Kyoto. Not only had Yasuke and the others come to the city, but so had many others from the surrounding region. Country people not necessarily accustomed to city life, and especially not accustomed to seeing Europeans, Chinese, and Africans. And they had all descended into Kyoto for an event known as the Uma Zoroe, which was a kind of horse event which had been organized by Nobunaga. Now, having so many people so unaccustomed to foreigners, it took everyone visiting Kyoto by surprise. In a way, Yasuke did create quite a bit of awe in all of these people at the time you know we've kind of talked about obviously already most of the world at this point in you know Africa people were taken as slaves but in Japan there was no negative imagery associated with skin color in fact certain images of the Buddha from this time did even portray him with dark skin so in some instances, this skin color was even revered more highly than others, at least religiously. In fact, we even have several types of artwork depicting dark-skinned people from Japan at the time, and we even know that a Portuguese merchant known as George Alvarez noted that the Japanese would travel 15 leagues to see black men and would entertain them for three or four days. So, to be able to meet a person of this color, it was... I suppose in Japan it was almost seen as a privilege. So these people were indeed rare occurrences in Japan, but they did hold a lot of respect. That's really lovely. I, I love hearing it from that perspective. It's, it's a refreshing just, change. It's beautiful. It's like, thank you. That's just sorry. I had to stop and say, I'm I'm so glad that it was it was a position like it was it was an honor to meet someone with a darker skin yeah, exactly. color. I just mm -hmm beautiful so i had to stop you so thank you no 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 it's all right but all of this respect caught alessandro off guard he would have prepared some form of crowd control even hoping to use yasuke to bring in more people in wonderment but yasuke's presence made all his crowd controlling plans impossible much like a battle plan it never survived the start of the fighting such was his plan equally scuppered as a few as the few hundred people that had been around them was almost doubling every few blocks that they walked through the city and from what i was reading it said that a fever took the crowd a need to see yasuke almost and the entire city of kyoto evolved into a practical riot and unfortunately, Alessandro had decided to leave the horses when they entered in Kyoto, as he thought walking as a procession would be more dramatic. As we know, when they were in Osaka, they had to use their horses to push through the crowd, but they mm. no longer had this ability. Unfortunately, this now meant that Yasuke was running as best he could away from the crowds as they followed him, desperate to see him or even to get a hold of him. In fact, the whole procession by now had all been separated by the crowd and no one was in charge. 
Yasuke, Alessandro were following Takayama Ukon's soldiers as they pressed through the still growing crowds, trying as best they could to reach the church in the center of Kyoto. So Alessandro's plans at this point had definitely fallen by the wayside. And they get crowded out, perhaps. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now, as they're fleeing, running around Kyoto to save themselves, they did I read that they did reach a small shrine. Um, enclosed on all four sides with a rickety bamboo fence. So Yasuke, the giant man that he was, bulldozed through one of the weak fences so they could escape out the back from the crowds. But they continued to merely follow him through the hole that he had created. He was still very much the center of attention. And I'm maybe even sure that at this point, Alessandro was grateful for that. The riot wasn't directed at him. It was directed at the person who was his protector. I say, yeah, but if if there was an opportunist, that was, would have been a perfect time to uh, grab Alessandro. Very true. So after all the running, well, I suppose fleeing, we could say at this point, the church did come into view. And this one was dedicated to Our Lady of the Assumption, Mary. And it was now a four-year-old church built in the Japanese style to make potential converts more comfortable with the change in faith so it didn't look as foreign, therefore as scary, I suppose. The people within the church saw Yasuke and the small group approaching, and as they squeezed in through a side entrance, the door was barred shut to finally allow Yasuke and the others some time to rest. However, the crowds were still there. They surrounded the church. The shutters were quickly closed as rocks began to pelt against the church and into the church enclosure. People scrambled to barricade the other entrance to the church shut so no, none of these rioters could get in. And the outer walls even began to buckle and splinter under the weight of the people. The crowds outside chanting to be let in and for Yasuke to be let out. Who really knows what would have happened if they did get in? I mean, Yasuke did have his weapons, but the Jesuits were forbidden to use them. If they had gotten in, it probably wouldn't have ended well for them. But as quickly as the crowds had been trying to break in, suddenly that changed and now they could be seen fleeing away. Cavalry and foot soldiers were now marching slowly down the street and these were the warriors of Oda Nobunaga. The soldiers arrived, a man known as Father Argentino addressing one of the warriors asking how they may serve the warriors. And the reply was simple. Oda Nobunaga would see him. And much to their elation, they replied saying, yes, of course. I mean, Alessandro had been granted an audience and they would be happy to come along. But they were cut short. It wasn't Alessandro who would be seeing Nobunaga today. Nobunaga wanted to see Yasuke. He wanted to meet the man who had disturbed the peace in Kyoto and no one else. So he would get what the crowds wanted, the individual audience with Yasuke because he's Oda Nobunaga. In essence, yeah. See, I think it's very strange after all of this, Alessandro's had this, he had this big plan to meet Nobunaga. He's done all this planning. He's done all this traveling through Ninja and Jezebel and pirates and everything. And then they get all this way and then Nobunaga doesn't want to see him. He wants to see the man who Alessandro practically treats as a slave. And I do wonder how he felt about that. I was wondering that too. But I mean, perhaps, I don't know, because the, the, for the crowds, Alessandro was glad that he wasn't the center of attention, but for this, his goal, he would have perhaps been rather jealous. He wants to have the attention again. Mm -hmm. So for the meeting of Nobunaga, Nobunaga was actually only five minutes away. Headquartered at the Honnoji Temple, Yasuke was redressed into suitable attire. He was a bit scruffy after all the running and everything. With Father Argentino, who was a longtime acquaintance of Nobunaga, the two of them went together and headed to their meeting. And what was more, Yasuke did have to leave his weapon at the church, so for the first time, probably in a long time, he was actually unarmed. And so they reach the temple, Yasuke bowing, as you do in the Japanese tradition, bowing on his knees, and then he was asked to shuffle closer to Nobunaga. And after that, Argentino stated that Yasuke could speak Japanese. And as we know, he'd learned by now from 
listening in Alessandro's meetings and Nobunaga was happy to test this out, asking at once for Yasuke's name and to ask him if he was comfortable. Luckily, I suppose, Yasuke had learned his Japanese in the form of the more polite courtly fashion and not the more casual generic Japanese. And so Nobunaga did find his reply acceptable and the correct level of politeness. That is probably, that probably was ideal for Yasuke. Especially meeting the most powerful man in Japan. It's lucky that he did know the correct form of Japanese for this. So after this, Nobunaga, he asked Yasuke to stand so that he may rub at his skin. He did, after all, doubt the color of it to be real. And rubbing it obviously didn't do anything. So he asked for a brush and water to be brought in. Nobunaga used the brush and the water himself, having Yasuke take off his shirt so that he could brush all over his body, and eventually, finally, amazed and satisfied that he truly did have the dark skin, he nodded, called for food and drink, and Yasuke was to be the guest of honor here this evening. Ha. Huh. I can see your face. Aha. Uh -huh. Processing. Ah, uh aha. -huh. Go on. I don't know if I want to go on. That's very humiliating and yeah and then after all of that he's a guest of honor so he had to go through humiliation to be a guest of honor or i don't know if, if yasuke had been submitted to this kind of treatment before i'd assuming possibly he had but that's really ah oh, poor yasuke i do wonder if no it's unlikely that such a thing would have happened before because in the rest of the world People knew that there were people with darker colored skin, but I suppose in Japan at the time, it was still very much an, not foreign idea, a, an alien idea. Like it's, it's an almost impossible thing to imagine is real because mm. um, they just wouldn't have seen it. Or if they did, it was so rare that it's almost like it lends itself to a folktale or something. So say poor, poor Yasuke. And so Nobunaga called for his three sons, Nobutada, Nobukatsu, and Nobutaka. And he called them to come see this man so that they may learn and see of the people that lived outside of Japan. The feast began as Nobunaga then began to question Yasuke on various topics. Now, when I was reading some of the questions and some of the answers that Yasuke he was giving, I found some of them to be a little bit interesting and kind of hailed back to the first episode where we introduced him. Um, because he did talk of his homeland, which was farther away than even India, pointing it out on a globe that Nobunaga had been gifted by the Jesuits. But his home, when he talked of it, he apparently talked of how he had been taken from his homeland before the coming of age ceremony for boys, when they would have been given facial scarring. Oh. Which, as we talked about, then would mean he probably came from one of the Dinka peoples. Reading back on my notes for that episode, um, I was unsure why they wrote that they drew on these tattoos. It was, in fact, scarification that um. they did. So apologies for that. But I do find it interesting here to find more evidence. Maybe I want to say, like, concrete evidence, perhaps, on where Yasuke did actually come from. So perhaps we do have an answer for his origins, which is kind of nice. I didn't realize that... that actual facial scarring I, I knew tattoos but i didn't realize like facial scarring was also also done huh I'll put a picture in the show notes of the um facial scarification for people to have a look at what it was like or is is still like to this day for the tribes so it's definitely interesting to look at hmm. now the festivities grew less formal as you know in japan most meetings start off very formal and then when you drink enough sake everyone <laughs> becomes your best friend and it said that yasuke did a little bit of dancing with the warriors there and even and even at one point one woman inquired how strong he was and so nobunaga demanded that he try to pick her up with only one arm to show his strength though yasuke decided to use one arm to pick up two women instead to amaze everyone with his strength in fact, a member of the 
festivities at the time. A man known as Ota Gyuichi later recorded that Yasuke's formidable strength surpassed that of ten men. Now eventually, everything did draw to a close, so Nobunaga ended the meeting by gifting Yasuke ten strings of copper coins which weighed over 80 pounds. Now not only is this a large amount of weight even for someone as Yasuke, it would have been a very small fortune back at this time. Um, I do wonder if what we're going to see happens to that money. I do wonder maybe Alessandro will take it or mm -hmm. maybe he'll let Yasuke keep it. But after this, the meeting did end and days later, Alessandro did finally get his meeting with Nobunaga but he did go without Yasuke. Many different gifts were given to Nobunaga, and the final gift that Alessandro offered to Nobunaga was Yasuke himself, to which Nobunaga agreed. Huh. Yasuke was to become a novelty and a weapon bearer for Nobunaga's immediate entourage, but there was definitely more of this to come. Yasuke would still be moving up in the world, but were not quite there yet. And just to hint at what to come, Ryasuke would very much be going from his servant background to a point where we will see in a month he's going to be coming a samurai and for the first time probably ever he's even going to have his own staff and servants for himself. Wow. And I kind of wanted to end it there today. Aww. I mean, looking at how long we've recorded, it's it's definitely much shorter than our other recordings. But it seemed like a very good place to end it there. Like, he, there's a big change coming to his life. So yeah, this is definitely going to be a much shorter episode than the other two were. So we're definitely going to be having a lot a few more episodes for this ongoing episode 60 series and I'm not too fussed about that. I don't mind keeping it going for as long as we need to tell this whole story. I did at first play around with the idea of, you know, we stop for a while and come back like we've done with the Shinto, but then Alfredo was saying we should stick with it because it's the story of one person. If mm -hmm. we leave it and come back, we'll forget a lot of things, whereas the Shinto, mm -hmm. we kind of do one element and it kind of lives in itself so we'll we'll i think we'll dot some bonus episodes in just to mm. break it up a little but keep continuing his story until it is finished we just need to decide what our bonus will be but what what do you think i know like i said it was a bit shorter but mm. there's a big change coming and when i when i was reading it i i knew yasuke helped you know, he does a lot in Japan. I know he helps out in future battles and things, but I didn't realize it was because he was his ownership changed. I, I didn't know that. Well, it's, it sounds like what's coming is that he is sort of leaving like servitude behind in a way because he's going to be serving Nobunaga. So he's his station has changed it sounds like that's what's coming which is great because you know I'm, I'm i'm a yasuke fan too i'm glad that we're going to continue on with this because mm. i mean it, to accomplish like so much and he is multi-talented you know he he had so many talents he and it's the story is just completely fascinating and it's it's I really hate your stopping it right now. So like, <laughs> what's next? What's next? But I also, I it's a nice transition bridge, I guess, from from the Yasuke before to the Yasuke after. Not not as much to discuss this time because it not, was not really. There was not much new to discuss. Um, it was very straightforward. Yeah, I mean, there are some things we could discuss, but I'm 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 hesitant to get into some of that that topic because a I I don't know enough, and b it's something I feel like I can't appropriately talk about. So yeah. there are some things I understand that, but also I mean it, it, historical context. We have historical context for this. I mean the time period it was, so it could start some conversations from that. But I feel like I mm. don't want to head I don't want to head those conversations. I feel like that's a a nice topic maybe other people who are more knowledgeable, perhaps. So I want to just look at it from the standpoint of this person who did amazing things had, you know, started out in his background and yeah. to be so accomplished and so amazing that he became a samurai. That is 
that's what I want to talk about. That mm-hmm. that's I, I, oh, next episode. Darn it! <laughs> I feel like Darn. next week will be a very interesting episode when we see that start to all happen and come together. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm still I'm I'm glad there was that you put in information about things uh, like so the, the questions that Yasuke received, and I still I wish we had some writing from him. Yeah. I still like I wish there was a diary or writing or something because I, I really want to hear like his own words. So I'm hoping we'll still we'll still happen to find that. Or like even like you saw that they said that the facial tattooing was actually facial scarring. So perhaps the origins, you know, came later in the in the in the story. Perhaps maybe his words might come as well. So I'm, I'm still holding out hope for that. I'm also very intrigued to see how the story ends for him. Because mm. um, he's if he's now under the employment, I'll say. Yeah, I think it's changed. It's, 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 yeah. it's employment now. If he's under the employment of Oda Nobunaga. He has no more connections to Europe. He's pretty much now he is part of Japan. So where did he end up? What happened to him at the end? Yeah, but you cut 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 me off, so I can't find that out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either. We're finding this all out together, which is why I'm enjoying this series we're doing so much. Mm-hmm. Completely agree. It's mm. it, it's nice to focus on one thing for a long time. We have not. Yeah, this is the first time we've done this for so long. This is ep- the third episode, right? Mm-hmm. I think the only other three part two we've had was when we did the first emperor. Ah. So as of that, yeah, as of next week when we do part D, this will be the longest one we've been doing. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. We're, so let's let's go ahead. We're going to be recording next soon, right? Right soon, because I need to hear the next installment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll be recording later on in the week, like usual. Woohoo! But I know that you were saying you had a song for today. Oh, so way back. Oh my. Gosh, this was January last year. Oh, <laughs> I remember writing this in a dotour back in January, back in the before times, sitting there at dotour, drinking my black coffee, no cream or sugar, just 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 delicious coffee. And I think I had a, did I have a cake or lunch? I can't recall. But I wrote this last january and i promised i promised that i was going to sing this as a bonus episode and we're almost to april of 2021 and oh no <laughs> it's been in the future episode list but we haven't touched it so and we, we don't generally do themes so, i mean like like, like uh, i guess seasonal like right as the season happens we sometimes do we sometimes don't but this week there are are cherry blossoms. So went to a park yesterday, saw some cherry blossoms, and you can even driving around, like you can see. And I know in Meguro, the, there's that walk by the Meguro River that all of those cherry trees are blossoming now, and it's it's gorgeous. So so yes, the Sakura song. So we have the lyrics and back from oh my god, from the before times. And I have I have the second verse. There is a first verse, but. I've got the lyrics from the second verse. And I, Thomas, I have full disclosure. I pre-recorded this because yeah. this pentatonic scale, I have a I have a, a friend who listens, dear friend who listens, who's an amazing musician, and she's got much better listening skills than I do as a musician. I have to work on Circle of Fists and all of that fun stuff. So I did not trust myself to sing this live because that last, that last line, you're going down a fifth. Um, mm. is, is, is really difficult, especially in the scale, since it's a minor scale. Yeah, I had, I had to have, I had to have music. I don't have a piano here or a keyboard. So I had to like use recorded music. So I have a pre-recorded of it for you to listen. So good.
doesn't sound like how I expected it. How so? As, as in, you can tell from how it's sung that it's an old song. Mm -hmm. Like you kind of you hear this kind of singing well in in temples and things like that. Like it's more traditional. It's older verses. Like how it's sung is very different to, for mm -hmm. instance, Yuki Yakonko that you sang. Like completely different. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That was really cool. It was really nice to listen to. And the so that the if you hear it sometimes on instrumental, you hear it lower. So mm. it's like sakura, sakura, like. But I, I asked the professor and said the version I heard on online was this higher version. Yeah. And like I'm, I'm a mezzo soprano. So for this, this, this area is definitely at. I even sang it more, like more, <laughs> more properly, more formal versus the Yuki Akonko. So. Mm. You can tell, like this is more. Even my my singing feels more formal. I think I don't know if it's because the the scale, but so yeah, you classically trained mezzo sopranos. Impressive. Yuki <laughs> Kong is not no, not 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 impressive. I promise you, not impressive. <laughs> but thank you. Um, so free musicians, you know what that is. So it was it was definitely like I had to use a lot was, like breath controls for this too mm. because it's that there's the style of singing it's more you know yeah like you said it's it's from the as edo it's time of the edo period i believe and it's much different than the music of today so the lyrics came from meiji but the the actual the music was from mm. edo so that's why it sounds and it's got that that scale when it's sung it's generally sung in that higher that mm. higher that higher scale so I would have tried to sing it in the lower scale, but also it would have, I'm, since I met so like that's kind of a little bit low for me, I can hit it, but it's definitely chest voice. So there's also some music background here. Also, did you notice the very end? So in, in Jap, in, you know, in Japanese, mm, the, mm -hmm. the hiragana, mm, katakana, mm, that's the sound. We usually don't end on just that mm sound in, in English sung music. So it's yeah. very, interesting to to sing that lyrics and have n be the final the final note as opposed to like like an in on so you have usually a vowel but to have just the consonant is is a little bit more rare so it's very it's very interesting to sing it you have to specifically sing as your final note and hold that yeah. final note so it's it's interesting it's interesting to sing music in japanese because there are some things that you would not expect or you might try to say Kan, but ka n as it has that split to sing that ka n, and you don't put the ah with the n, you put the ah separate. <laughs> that makes yeah. sense. So it's really fun to sing, though. Like it's it's honestly, it's a really fun song, especially because you don't sing in that scale hardly at all. Like especially minor scales aren't. It's it's most things, especially popular music, are in usually more in like a major scale it's like high, happy bright and cheerful but this sounds like i don't know how does how does this the music sound to you like what's the feeling you get when you hear it it's weird to say but for me it makes me feel like old church music in england so do if you, that makes sense but do you recall the lyrics from from this like what the lyrics mean i have the english lyrics in front of me to me the the english the out Shall I read the English lyrics quickly? Yes, please do. I was okay, gonna ask so you the English lyrics go, Cherry blossoms, cherry blossoms across the spring sky. As far as the eye can see, is it mist or clouds? Fragrant in the air, come now, come now, let's go and see them. So for me, the lyrics are very much, I don't want to say on the nose, but I think like you kind of get what I mean. Like, there's no hidden meaning or anything to it, but I feel that with this kind of singing, it feels like a song that should have depth and hidden meaning to it because of how it's sung and because it's more traditional. But actually, the lyrics are pretty much straightforward. It is interesting, though, that you, you equated it to, like, like I'm guessing, as it liturg liturgical? Like mm. dirge kind, almost like a like a dirge um, yeah. like type of church music. So very, like, somber, and you would associate it with you know, a church service. That's fascinating. I mean, I think from what it's really beautiful to hear this song played is on a koto, which a koto mm. is a, is a, 
large stringed instrument and you pluck it. And have you right. have you had a, have you had a chance to play a koto before? Uh, no, but I've I've seen them played. So I I've actually had the chance to play this instrument twice and this same song. I think this this song is one of the maybe one of the first or one of the most popular ones to learn on the koto um, because I got to participate actually twice. I got to go to when I was um, an ALT. I got to join a class and there's little bitty, like I think it's made from shell. It's a kind of ring you put on that has like a long nail and you pluck with that. So you have, you hold the string with one hand and then you can pluck and you have to hold strings and pluck at the same time. It's, it's a little, it was a little difficult, especially because like sometimes the little, I'm not sure what they're called. Honestly, I have to go look that up, but the little plucks fall off your finger sometimes. Right. <laughs> so there's also a skill in holding them, making sure they don't fall off while you pluck. But if you really want to hear this song like beautifully done, I recommend Koto. And I'll see if I can find a a link, like a YouTube video that you can hear. Cause I think I think it's I, I prefer I prefer to hear it on the Koto rather than me singing it. I would I like the Koto. It's it's just a beautiful instrument. So but it's um yeah much lower pitch. So this was a little higher and I was I was I, I've only, I think I've generally heard maybe more, more women sing this than I think men, but I, I, I'm not sure. I have to look that up as well. But usually when I hear someone singing it, it is, it is more female voice. So, hmm, I see. So finally sung the Sakura song. We can remove this off the list. So there's no, there'll be no bonus for this unless someone really wants to have this, but that's, you know, I don't have an instrument. If I had a, an instrument behind me, I wish I did. I wish I had piano i wish i had koto so i'm just singing this acapella because you know we're low budget podcast so <laughs> well i think it was beautifully done but if anyone wants any extra info about the song uh, like tether says we've already covered it in episode 33 so you can head on to those show notes if you want a bit more of the history of the song i i'm glad you finally sung it it was it was really nice and like i said not what i was expecting at all after yeah, I was expecting something as upbeat as Yuki Akonko, but it, it really was not. <laughs> it was no. Not. Yes, Thomas, come and see the cherry blossoms with me. Please come. Please come. Anyway, thank you, Heather, and thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I'm sorry to leave you on that cliffhanger, Heather, and everyone else listening, but that is what you get. So until next week, everyone, check out the show notes over up on historyofjapan.co.uk. We did revamp the homepage now. Um, so let us know what you think. But until next week, guys, that's everything from me. How about you? That's all for me. All right. Well then, guys, speak to you next week. Matane. Mina san, kyotsukete. Matane.